Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today we're going to show you how we fixed our AC or connected it back to a functional state. We couldn't find any videos on this on YouTube or any information to be honest. Um, we've just kind of gathered this together and experimented. Um, it's a pretty complicated job, so if you don't know what you're doing, hopefully this can help you. Uh, this is for the big box ambulances, so the ones that drive around in Australia in any other country they might be a bit different, but the overall system for the AC is the same. You have a compressor, you have a condenser, you have an evaporator, and in between you have the dryer and pressure switch and the fan controllers and all that stuff. So I'm not going to go into details on how an AC works, there's enough videos you can find on that on YouTube. Um, just going to show you how we connected ours and how it looks in the end. To do this, you're going to need a multimeter. This is your favorite tool on this job. You're going to need this a lot just to test out all the wires and everything else. You're going to need this in van life anyway, so go and get one. It's going to be useful. Next, you're going to need some wire snippers. You can get these in all kinds of sizes. We just have a big one. Um, also, you'll need a crimp tool. Um, there's a crimp end on the end of the pliers and at the other end you can use it to take the insulation off the wires. And we also used a soldering iron which you don't necessarily need if you're crimping but it can definitely help when attaching wires together. These kits are pretty cheap, you can get them with a bunch of different attachments. Now you're probably going to need some other tools depending on what kind of problems you run into but these are your main tools that you're going to need um, besides a lot of wire. <laughs> so get ready to buy a lot of wire. We just got two 10 meter rolls and also bought some very thick 2.5 square millimeter wire for the big fans. So the big blower fans, um, they actually use a, a little bit more power and they have a pretty high amp draw. So we used some thicker diameter wires just to make sure that we don't overload the wires and they start heating up when we're using the blowers. Make sure you familiarize yourself with all the components involved. So this is the big box ambulance where we have the intake on the side of the van. This is our intake blower fan. Then we have our evaporator with the blower motors and blowers. Those are the outlets. Here's our thermostat. There's our lines, our dryer, and all our controllers right here. Now, in this ambulance, this was right here, and that's actually a VMUX controller for the entire VMUX system from Weldon Akron Brass. And these are useless if you don't have the controllers in the front of the electrical box, which we don't. So you can pretty much take this out, throw it away, or sell it, or whatever you want to do with it. Um, to replace that, we're just going to use fan speed controllers and wire up all of this stuff with relays. The other controller on this board here is used to control the condenser fans as well as the pressure switch. This is what your pressure sensor looks like. So it's a pressure transducer, which is what it's actually called. You have your red is your 5 volt input, your orange is your signal, and the other wire is your ground. And it's connected at the dryer. That's your dryer right here. Now, before you start cutting wires or anything, make sure you know what all of this is. So, luckily, this controller unit has a description of all of the connectors here. So, you pretty much know what's happening. Now, remember that an AC system has a compressor in the front that's driven by the engine belt. That would be the red wire on this connector right here. And you have the yellow wire, which is the water pump, which will pump coolant into your system and you can use it to heat. And then check the rest of the wire. So this blue wire, for example, is our pressure 
our condenser engage, the purple one is our pressure in, and the green one is our thermostat. So we're going to use all of these to wire up the relays and make this system work pretty much autonomously. So these blower motors, they actually have a blade connector on the top where that orange wire is. It's hard to get back there to show you. Um, and they have, if you, I don't know if you can see it, they have three different settings. So you can put it on the max setting, the minimum setting, or in between. So you can actually pick the speed that these run at. Only problem is, if you don't want to always have to pull the cover off, then you're going to have to do it with some other method. So we're using a PWM. But theoretically, you could only put it on a switch and only have it turn on and off. Now, we want to be able to let this run at night so we can turn it on very, very, just very, very slightly. Um, so you don't really have these loud, this loud noise because when you do turn it on completely, turn it on completely real quick, it is really loud and. So that's the full speed and turn it down more and more. So we want to have it running at like this speed at night. So we bought this PWM controller, fan speed controller. PWM is pulse width modulation. It pretty much um, just regulates the voltage to the fans or in this case we're using it for the blowers and that way you can control whether the blower is on high or on low or anything in between obviously all right so we put the PWM for the flow blower fans which are these ones right here that pretty much push air around through the cabin onto this PWM which is rated for 20 amps the fans used about 7 amps. Now we used a pretty thick wire, so this is 2.5 millimeters squared, attached one end to the plus, plus pole right here, and the other end is from the switch that goes into the plus of the PWM. Then there's the negative that runs to the negative pole, and then there's the fans, the two fans plus and the two fans negatives. Um, Pretty much, we ran it all the way here to a switch. Here you can just turn it on. And then you can regulate it with this potentiometer, which we will later... We'll later put that all the way next to the switch, so we're gonna have to cut these wires as well. Our intake blower fan, so this white one right here. This yellow and black wire, you have to follow it all the way back here, comes out up here. And we've attached it here just with some crimp lugs. Um, I didn't feel like soldering last night, so these are a pretty quick and easy way, or if you're not good at soldering, also a very good way to join wires together. Um, just make sure once you crimp them, they're, they're pretty solid. I'll also add a tip with crimping, making sure that the insulation is inside of these and not sticking out, or the wire, the bare wires aren't sticking out of these. So I used red wire for positive, just trying to keep it consistent. Red wire for positive, connect, connect to the yellow power wire of the fan, and black to black negative. They all run to the small fan speed controller, which is going to be also put all the way over there on the end of that board. So we're here on this fan speed controller and the fan speed controller gets its power from the switchboard. So that's this switch. And now we can regulate the fan speed. And this fan speed controller is actually gonna be put next to the switch because that's where the potentiometer is and we want the knobs to be right next to the switches. So just a little tip when working with wiring. So when you take off the insulation of the end of the wires, if you're using, for example, crimp plugs or these terminals, you always want to stick the wire in so it's not sticking out. So you don't want it to look like this in the end where there's bare wires still looking out of it. You want it to be all the way on there 
So you want the insulation of the wire to end at the back of the crimp lug. So this part is still in insulation and this is the back of the crimp lug, the metal part. That's where you want the insulation to end. When you put it into these terminals, you also want to make sure that you don't have bare wire sticking out like that because you will eventually maybe cause shorts and that's not a good idea. So you always want to stick it all the way in. Don't stick it in so the insulation gets sque gets uh, squished down by the screw. Only stick it in far enough to where the insulation is um, pretty much flush with the top of this. And if you need to, just cut some more wire off or um, insulate some more, uh, take, take off some more insulation just to be sure that you're doing this correctly. You don't want to cause shorts. So if you want to use your evaporator unit, so this big box right here as a heater as well, all you have to do is pretty much cut this yellow wire here from this uh, plug. So I've already cut it, it's this one. That runs the water pump. There's the fuse for it and there's the relay for that. That, that yellow wire actually only goes to the relay. So this is the wire and attached red because it's positive. And this goes to my switch again. You can turn this on. You won't really be able to hear it, but the water pump's on now. So it's circulating coolant through this box, which it can then run air over to heat it up. And then you have hot air as a heater. So the hardest part of this whole job is figuring out how to wire the compressor because you can't leave it running the whole time. So you have your AC compressor clutch fuse right here and your compressor clutch relay right here. And this is the fan speed controller for the condenser unit on the roof. So this one is power, this one is the engagement of the condenser, and this one is your pressure out. These three. This is your power for your pressure, pressure switch, your negative for your pressure switch, and your signal for your pressure switch. So pretty much what you can do is whenever you turn on your compressor, so we're going to do that with a normal switch, our switchboard over there, you're going to turn on the compressor, and at the same time you're going to engage the condenser unit, which will then regulate how fast these fans run to make sure that the condenser is uh, cooled enough so the pressure doesn't rise too high and the temperature doesn't get too hot. So because the fan speed, or because the, the pressure switch here is run off of five volts and the signal is only five volts, which means this output pressure signal here is only five volts, we're just gonna refunction an Arduino, re Arduino relay, which is a 12 volt relay with a five volt input for this compressor this compressor clutch relay system here so what we're going to do is we're going to wire uh, the positive in in of the compressor into a normally closed circuit so you can find out which one is normally closed by just doing a quick uh, continuity test so these this is normally closed so if there's no energy in the relay there's current flowing through this loop and there's no current flowing through this loop and once it once it gets a signal then it would turn this this loop on and this loop off which is exactly what we want because we want the signal from the pressure out to turn off the compressor compressor clutch so the compressor is disengaged so the pressure doesn't get too high in the system so we're just going to put this up here to do that, we're gonna clip off the pressure out switch right here, which is the purple switch right here on this on this plug. And a good tip when you're cutting wires off of plugs is leave a little short stub on there because if you do want to reuse the plug, you can easily take the insulation off this and solder some other wire on it. So we're gonna cut the pressure out switch the pressure, pressure out signal and the, co the condenser engagement right here as well as the compressor clutch engagement right there. Now we're going to bring all of these three up here. There we go.
and we're going to add so this one is the compressor clutch engagement is going to go on the opposite side of the relay and this one is the signal so the signal goes here on the Arduino relay and this is the uh, compressor the, the condenser engagement so that will go in here with this so when the positive switch is, is turned on this uh, is turned on as well immediately all right so this is what it looks like wired up now maybe that'll make it a bit easier to, f to figure out so this is the engagement for the condenser unit this is the positive from our switchboard so this will pretty much turn on when you turn flip the switch and this will be running so this is normally closed loop remember so there's always power here until this pressure out signal right here turns this closes this loop so the only thing that you have to worry about is this pressure out signal is um, normally at 10 volts but if you attach a load to it it'll actually be four four to five volts and the reason why we don't want to attach this relay directly to the wires of the pressure sensor is because this pressure outlet actually protects against high pressure and low pressure because when this sensor input is actually taken off there's actually a, a load here so this will be between 3 and 4 volts so about 3.5 to 4 volts usually about 3.8 and if the pressure here gets too high so if this sensor input is 5 volts then this will also show 5 volts which when input here will close the relay and therefore the compressor will be disengaged which will then pretty much it'll protect the compressor against too high of a pressure and too low of a pressure. So what we're going to do now is cut this potentiometer so we can put it with the switchboard and the, the other um, knob so we can control the fan speed from where we want the switches to be instead of from where the PWM is. So we're just going to use some, this is four core cable, we wanted three but it was only four so we're going to use that and just going to cut this here and solder these, these all lines together. I'm just going to use the white one for the yellow one and the red and black I'm going to stick with just to be consistent. So this is a little method that I like to use to splice wires. So this is the negative of the pressure sensor so I'm actually just gonna do a little V shape here make sure you twist these two and then you can put it on there and wrap both ends around just like that and that one on this side of the wire and now it's pretty easy to solder these together Make sure you put some tape to insulate the wires from shorting anything or especially you don't want these two metal bare metal parts to touch each other else you'll create a short. Make sure you put some tape around it. Oops, the relay is already switching. <laughs> See our relay is already working. So now we are running the wires.
across here. So I've drilled two holes. I've already put some wires in there. Gotta put the other wires out of here. Tensiometer is here. Final mission is getting this fat wire through here, which is gonna be a pain. So I couldn't get these wires through here without taking off the insulation, this fat part here. So I'm taking this off all the way up to the point where it goes into that hole. Now we're gonna mount the relay up here in the middle and clean up all this wiring mess and let it finish right there. So we have now officially cleaned up all the wiring here. Mounted the relay, there's the PWM, the relay, and that's the controller for the condenser unit and its fans. Looks a little bit more cleaned up than it was before. Alright, so now we're going to make this wiring mess here look nice. So we're going to pull all these tight, make sure it's one solid bound, and then we're just going to tape it. Once around. So now we're taping it down with some duct tape to make sure it doesn't move. On the note of the PWMs, we have decided to install the, so the power, which is this wire right here, for the PWM, or maybe this one, I'm not sure, it runs to the switch. So we've switched the power to the PWM, so in case we don't want to run the fans, you just switch it over the power. You can theoretically put your switch onto the positive or negative you should always put it on positive but you can put it on the positive of the fans um, that way your PWM will always be on and you're only controlling the power to your fans I opted for the turning off the PWM that way you're protecting the circuitry there and that way it's not always in use which makes it probably will hopefully make it last a bit longer while you have these covers off, you can always take the air filter out like this. You have to unlatch these little latches. And then you pull this whole unit back and the air filter sits right there. It's not a bad idea to take it out. Only vacuum it out. Don't fill it with water. It says specifically on there not to clean it with water so just vacuum it out and that should be fine these aren't very dirty anyways ours has probably been in here forever and it's still really clean now that we've got everything wired up and connected here we are going to go ahead clean the inside of the covers and reattach them so this finally doesn't look like a giant construction site anymore so this is what it looks like with the covers on, and it has decorated it nicely with some pictures. And here's to the functional part. We have our blower, which is controlled by an attention meter knob, and the fresh air inline intake. And then we have heating, which is a water pump and cooling, which engages the compressor clutch. We're glad we can finally use the aircon, not only for cooling, but also for heating the back compartment. This comes in very handy as it gets cooler during the nights now. It's winter in Queensland. If you liked this video, consider subscribing, hit the bell, give us a like, or follow us on Instagram at jp underscore adventures 19. Stay tuned for more videos.
This is how it looks like when Patrick's working on electrical stuff. It's always a big mess. 